The Haut-Richelieu is a teeming border region at the heart of a long tradition of economic exchange. It offers beautiful routes between the United States and Quebec. One of these routes is an important waterway with the Richelieu River connecting to Lake Champlain. This favorable geographic position is a perfect setup for development when linked to the initiative of visionary characters who operate innovative infrastructures and use cutting-edge technologies. The first Canadian railway and the construction of the Chambly Canal were daring projects testifying to the entrepreneurial spirit of its inhabitants. Through its economic dynamism, Saint-Jean was a major industrial and maritime player and for a century became the pottery capital of Canada. Hidden in its stones and along its silent river, we can still see the marks of its rich past today. We're here at the Ryan Dock in Saint-Anne-de-Sabrevois on the Richelieu River. Let's talk about this river. It is Montérégie's main river and comes from the Lake Champlain up south. Here in Sabrevois, we find ourselves in the Haut Richelieu. Then the currents go down towards Chambly, Saint Charles sur Richelieu, Saint Ours to finally flow through the Saint Lawrence River in Sorel. The Richelieu River. Jacques Cartier himself described it as the intriguing river in the southwest direction, leading, according to the First Nations, to an abundant territory where there is never ice nor snow. Poetry aside, he was talking about Florida. But Cartier never used this river. Then, in 1603, Samuel de Champlain explores the Richelieu River with the Innu. Yes, because of course, long before the French's arrival, the river was part of the First Nations' everyday lives and lifestyle. Champlain will call it oh, the Rivière des Iroquois. In fact, it already was its name. The Maguezibo, which in Abenaki meant, what a surprise, the Iroquois River. The river had another name the Masoliantic, which still in Abenaki meant water where there is lots of food. Mm -mm. But this river looked for its identity for a long time. At times, it changed its name entirely or parts of it, which means that during the colonization, it was called the Sorel River, the St. Louis River, and then the Chambly River. Quiz! But why was it finally called the Richelieu River? A. Because of the site's great beauty, the governor designated it as a Richelieu, which in English means place of abundance. B. Because of the small wooden fort on its shores that will be called Richelieu in honor of the cardinal of the same name. Or C. Richelieu is a deformation of Rochelieu, nickname given to the river because of its numerous rapids. The answer is... B. In 1642, the governor establishes a small wooden fort. He will call it Richelieu, the same name as the well-known Cardinal Richelieu, under the reign of King Louis XIII. But still, until the middle of the 18th century, it will be called the Iroquois River. The river will play various roles through time. Of course, a role in the military history with its five forts, but also a role in the commercial history. Until the appearance of the railway in the middle of the 19th century, the river plays a strategic role in the transportation of merchandise between Canada and the United States. Not only does the river have a lot to offer to history lovers, but it also attracts numerous nature lovers. Here, behind me on the Ryan Dock, you can see multiple interpretation panels that give information on the local fauna and flora. Now, you only have to breathe and soak everything in. The first Canadian railway. Did you know that it is in Saint-Jean-sur-Richelieu that the first Canadian railway was built? It is in England in the 19th century that humans succeeded in creating the first steam engine. In Quebec, in 1832, the first railway becomes the project of three businessmen from Montreal. Peter McGill from the Bank of Montreal, 
the well-known brewer John Molson, and Jason C. Pierce, an American entrepreneur established in St. John since he was made a prisoner during the Battle of 1812. According to them, the train, this new invention, will greatly solidify the business ties between the United States and Quebec. Their goal, to avoid the Richelieu River's rapids by establishing a railway between the municipalities of St. John's, St. John's Richelieu, and La Prairie in order to connect the Lake Champlain and the St. Lawrence River. They then set up the Champlain and St. Lawrence Railroad. A thousand men worked to set the ground and install around 23 kilometers of tracks before welcoming the Dorchester, Canada's first steam locomotive. Quiz! Do you know what was the nickname given to the locomotive by its operators? A. The Lion King. Rawr! Because of its terrible roar that could wake up the workers in the neighborhood. B. The asthmatic sled, because of the similarity between the sound of its pipes and the cough of the time. C. The devil's smoke, because of its impressive cloud of smoke. Or D. The kitten, because it was skipping on the rails like a cat. D. The kitten. They say that the locomotive was so capricious that trials were done at night to avoid scaring the people. Despite its character, the locomotive will accomplish its task without any difficulties and will confirm the success of the Champlain and St. Lawrence Railroad's initiative and will be inaugurated in July 1836. A river, a railroad, and a will of steel here is all that was needed to stir up a hornet's nest and ensure saint jean sur richelieus place in the two neighboring nations' business world. We are at the O. Richelieu Museum, exploring a chapter of the industrial history of the area. Did you know that for one century, saint jean sur richelieu and Iberville were considered as the Canadian capital of pottery? Yes, and here we can observe lots of beautiful pieces that are representative of our local expertise. Ceramic and Pottery at that time, ceramic has an important place in people's lives. Multiple objects that are used daily are made of it. Everything started in 1840. Moses Farrar and his father-in-law, Isaac Newton Soule, arrived from Vermont and installed a ceramic manufacture in St. Jean. It probably is the imminent opening of the Chambly Canal and the presence of the first Canadian railroad that made them want to settle here. The fact remains that they established themselves at the corner of Longueuil and Partition, today named St. George Street. They combined Vermont's clay and local clay, which formed a highly resistant mixture. These artisans brought with them in the area a revolutionary technical expertise in firing and glazing. In fact, the technique consists of exposing the sandstone to a temperature of 1250 degrees Celsius to vitrify it and waterproof it. And so, numerous pottery manufacturers will see the light of day on both shores of the Richelieu River. The industry is in great effervescence, but at the end of the 19th century, since we increasingly import the earthenware pieces of England, business drops for St. John's companies. We have to find new avenues. Quiz! What revolutionary product will be produced? A. Cufflinks. Highly unique and distinguished pieces. Ugh. <laughs> B. Hand painted flower pots using India ink. <laughs> C. Toilet bowls. Ugh. The answer is. 
C. Companies will turn themselves to the manufacture of pipes and sanitary products. Besides, at the end of the 1920s, Crane Limited establishes itself on Seminaire Boulevard. If we distance ourselves a bit from the elegant dishes that first characterized the production of earthenware in the region, we are in line with progress. The chamber pot 2.0 comes to be with the arrival of running water. Millions of city housings in North America welcome water closets, or WCs. No more chamber pot emptying in the morning, in the snow, when it's minus 25 degrees Celsius outside. All we have to do is to comfortably sit our bottom on the toilet, oh, oh I'm sorry, on the throne, and flush. Business opportunities are big for St. John's Potters, but except for toilets. Glass, cardboard, and plastic have replaced ceramic in our daily use. But the history remains, and the material is still useful to the creation of artworks that stay through time. Going in that direction, the mural we see on the actual city hall of saint jean sur richelieu is the work of a local ceramist. The next time you pass by, take the time to admire the mural and stop at the building right next to it, the Eau Richelieu Museum, where a simply wonderful little store awaits you. The Chambly Canal Every year, the Chambly Canal sees hundreds of thousands of visitors, boats, and boaters. But do you know its story? During the 19th century in Quebec, we dug multiple canals that played for over a hundred years an essential role in the development of the province. Among them, there obviously is the Champlain Canal, allowing us to avoid the Richelieu River's rapids between the Bassin de Chambly and Saint-Jean-sur-Richelieu, facilitating transport between the St. Lawrence River and Lake Champlain. Construction starts in October 1831, financed by five Americans, two of which are brothers who came to Chambly. Quiz! What were the two brothers established in Chambly called? A. The two brothers, Benoit Langlais and Daniel Thomas. B. The two brothers, Eric and Sonny Cahuet. Or C. The two Andrus brothers. It's, in fact, C. The Andrus brothers, not to be confused with Brother André from Saint Grégoire. Around 600 workers, mainly Irish, dig the two-thirds of the canal, almost 20 kilometers long, with picks and shovels. In 1832, a cholera epidemic hits the workers. Financial problems also appear, and in 1834, the American investors disappear. The two brothers try hard to jumpstart the construction without success. Everything stops in 1835, and we will have to wait five years before a new firm invests in the project and finally completes the construction site. In 1843, after 12 years of incidents, we finally opened the canal to navigation. Digging an entire canal by the sweat of our brow is relatively impressive, right? But... The work being barely done, the canal is already too narrow and a bit outdated for the new transport ships and has to face a great competition. The first Canadian railway, inaugurated here in saint jean sur richelieu in 1836. It was built in only four years and had been in function for seven years, but certain vendors will still continue to use the water route, notably for forest products. Whew! At the time, the majority of commercial transport on the canal is done with barges, led by horses. There then needs to be a route adapted for the horses, driven by carters. That is what we call the towpath. If you cannot navigate, we encourage you to come walk or roll on the canal strip, this beautiful green road that we call the Canal de Chambly. A dynamic and daring area of communication and exchange, we have seen that the Eau Richelieu, with its waterway and its railroad, 
its industrialists and its craftsmen, became a place of choice on our part of the continent, notably by building a solid economic relation with the United States. Nature and its inhabitants have fashioned a place where dreams become possible.